Hello, I'm Charles Sturgis. And I'm Will Ploughs, and welcome to episode four of the Drive-By Podcast. On episode four, the, the Prime de- Minister gets rear-ended. The Department for Transport lies to us. Volkswagen has a midlife crisis. Drive-By's next top model name. And we find out that Charles has the hots for Valtteri Bottas. Episode four, we're back for more. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, dear. okay, how are we okay. opening this week? Uh, right, first of all, yeah. Ineos Grenadier, that Ineos. came out this week, we saw it. It looks really cool. It looks good. It's basically a Defender, isn't it? I think it looks quite G-Wagon-y. I was just about to say, it looks like a Defender G-Wagon and a bit of a Jeep at the front. Do you, do you know what I'd say? It looks a bit Land cruiser at the back, because it looks, kind of, if you look at the back of it, because it's got the, the swing door... Mm. Um, it looks like the the first sort of Land Cruisers did when they had um, Ooh, yeah, like yeah. three quarters of it is door and then you have like one mm. which is to put the ladder on so I get the point but it looks I think it looks really good it does it looks very G-Wagony kind of the back corner doesn't it mm. um, yeah yeah looks brilliant I and I like the G-Wagony bonnet too as well yeah. with sort of early 2000s SVX Defender mm. inset grill lights yeah. So I like that. I yeah. can't wait to see it when it gets off road. And, and did, did I read really, they were doing like they're going to do like 1.8 million miles in it or something like that? They're going to do like okay. a, yeah. They're, they're doing a do big challenge, aren't they? They're going to do a lot of miles. Yeah. In it just to make sure that it looks. Probably good. needs to because it's up against a pretty big player, the defender, which we were playing around in earlier this week. Oh yeah, absolutely. How do you think it compares to that? Looks wise, uh, I th- I'd say the defender looks better. I think it does I as think well. defender looks better. I think it's more with the times. It's more looking forward. Would I have a, gren- a grenadier? I a probably a would. grenadier. A, a grenadier. Yeah. I think I probably would. I would have one of them. Would you? Yeah, I like it. I'd have the new defender. But did you see what the what Land Rover did the day before the Ineos came out? Mm. They launched the commercial one ten. Yes, they did. The hard top they did. sort of commercial. Oh, what size pallet you can get in there? Yeah, with like the the <laughs> mocked <laughs> with like the mocked up side yeah, yeah, yeah. thing the of, construction of construction um we're better than grenadier construction or something exactly. like that exactly. yeah so I'm, I'm looking forward to that we haven't really got much to say on that really because Not really until uh, until we hear more about how it drives which exactly. i'm very much looking forward to i mean i've covered it in a few episodes before yeah, anyway yeah. haven't we exactly so i think we should just dive into uh, other news that we've got yeah, thinking yeah. about absolutely this one that you pulled out is very interesting i've got charles really angry this week i'm properly cross um, but it's not like we're against electric cars in any way whatsoever. No, not really, no. I love, I love an electric car. But when really they good. throw stupid facts like this... Well, this is a, a Department for Transport headline that says there are twice as many EV charge points than mm. petrol stations. Now, the figure they're giving is the number of fuel forecourts in the UK is 8,046. And they're yeah. saying that the number of publicly accessible charging points... Is seventeen thousand nine hundred and something. Yeah, but when you think about that, how many fuel pumps do That's you get exactly it. on a forecourt? Now, it must say, be what like six on average. On average, I'd say about six because you get like mega ones which are eight and ten and twelve. Yeah, yeah. But then you get smaller occasional ones, ones which are smaller. So I'd say let's say that there are six yeah. on each forecourt. That comes out by my calculations as forty-eight thousand two hundred and something. Didn't realise you could do maths. Oh no, yeah, absolutely. But that is a ridiculous charging point because this is just a ploy, basically, just to say electric is the future, which it is. Mm. But they're kind of making it out to be something that so it really isn't. Well, the tr- what they should have said is that it's there's twice as many fuel pumps over twice as many fuel pumps than there are EV charging points by a long way. Exactly. So that's absolute rubbish. Yeah, and I hate stupid. It. I hate that. Yeah, but it's yeah. painting a bad name for electric cars, which it shouldn't be, because that is obviously the future of motoring. Is it though? Oh, it will be. I, yeah. I'm begging for hydrogen there. Begging for hydrogen. <laughs> Imagine one of those crashing though. What? Imagine. I'd be fine now. We'll work, right. work that out later. Yeah. Anyway, I've got some things to cheer you up. Oh really? Because yeah, so I am depressed. You are depressed those figures. those figures. Anyway, you know how last week it was um, Range Rover's 50th anniversary. Yes. Yeah. It was, and they brought out the, the model. How many models was it like? 1900 models with the 50 on the side. And oh, was it so, oh, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, the Boris Johnson was driving along with his convoy oh, and yeah. a Turkish protester ran out in front of him. And um, really? the Jaguar that he was in stopped, but the Range Rover didn't do. And so what it's done is it just crashed right into the back of oh, Bojo God, look at that. and that's left what I like to call a JLR love bite. That is a bit of a back, love bite on, on the, the back, back of there. the uh, That's a bit Jaguar. of a dig. But you see, that's, that'll be one of the Sentinel models, so that'll be mm. the full armoured job with the thick thing. And yeah. you see, I'm 
it's done well, but I didn't think it would make that much of a dent. No. Which is not ideal. That's exactly it. So yeah, that's a uh, Range Rover are definitely on the uh, lefty side trying to kill Bojo. <laughs> Oh dear, I'm not entirely sure about that. No, probably not correct. But anyway, moving on from that, before we get in too much trouble... Oh, please don't show me another electric another car. Another electric car. Oh, We're following please. a theme here, aren't we? Anyway, this is my auto I'm car. So, that's literally the only news that's coming out at the moment, it's is electric cars. It's depressing, isn't it? Stuff. And it's about to get worse, because there's a Swedish firm called Nev, which have just introduced this new Sango self-driving... Sango? Uh, Sango. That sounds like a port portaloo company, doesn't it? Well, it's funny you Sanitary say that. Go. Because, have you seen the picture of it? It no. looks like a proper urinal on wheels. Well, that does as well, doesn't it? Does that it look looks like that? a couple of portaloos strapped together on a trolley. That's exactly what it is. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. And it'll it's... smell like one as well. Yes, it will. After Could you imagine the people that get in there? A few years of that being a... What is it? Is it a self-driving... Electric what, shuttle. Say? Electric shuttle. It's basically the autonomous Uber of London. Or Uber pool when you share the mm. Uber around London. It's basically that, but autonomous. Oh, I just... Oh, hang on a minute. Say you get in the car. Yeah. Does it say who else can get in the car? Doesn't say. Can you get in there with a bag of nuts and the person in there has already got a severe nut allergy? Doesn't say. Well, I imagine it wouldn't. Have they thought about these things? I you bet see? they haven't. No, that's terrible. They're not, as, uh, they're not as foreseeing as we are. You're going to be getting in there with all sorts of sweaty rapists, yeah. people eating tuna sandwiches. Oh, God. I tell you what it would do. Yeah. Unite taxi drivers and Uber drivers. Because they hate each other. You actually might have a point there. Well, I think they've got something to unite themselves. The enemy of my enemy yeah, is my yeah. friend. So everyone's going to hate this, especially people, if it's autonomous and doesn't require a taxi driver or no. an Uber driver. They're going to get together and join forces, and mm. they're going to be... Because that's one of my favourite things to do in yeah. London. Watch taxi drivers and Uber drivers fight. Because they give each other the stare, don't they? Oh, God, they're, it's they're, like they're you're driving... screaming out the window. Yeah, it's like when you're driving down the motor and you always look left, don't you, and you overtake someone. This is what they do on a completely different scale. Oh, no, they're flipping... Pa they're, taxi drivers get especially cross, but they're flipping them off because they don't know where they're going because they use a, an app yeah, yeah, so yeah. they don't do the knowledge. So they're all over the place in yeah, the exactly. middle of the road and they get properly cross with them. So that's brilliant. So that is one good thing about that car. Will I be using it? No. Absolutely not. Well, it's no. funny you say that because the person who kind of came up with it, the company's vice president, has said, like, why do people want to have cars? So why would you want a car? What, my own personal car? Why would you so want I can get own? in, lock, yeah. fart in. Yeah. What else do you do in a car? Burp, sing Burp. along loudly. So am I going to be able Eat to sit there and, sandwich. and do the, oh, you know the bit, Bohemian Rhapsody bit from Wayne's World. Am I going to be able to sing Bohemian Rhapsody at the top of my voice and headbang in no. my Uber, in my Sango? Not unless you want a court case. Portaloo pool thing. Exactly. Anyway, yeah. Get it, get it, get it, get it away from you. Horrible, horrible. Um, yeah, so that's the end of that. That's a Swedish sh car share thing. Anyway. You know how trust the Swedes to do something trust like that, obviously. Yeah. Just make pastries. Yeah. Anyway, you know how we've been in... That's <laughs> Danish, isn't it? <laughs> not such a cock you are. <laughs> no, leave the Swedes to do... What do Swedes do? Well, Volvo... Interior. Um, they do interior. They do good interiors. Ikea. Oh, Ikea. Yeah. Meatballs. And snowmobiles. Leave them to do that. That's all they need to do. Though. Oh, well, probably. I bet and they're north of it. Now they've attempted at autonomous cars, which they shouldn't be doing. No. Make it autonomous. Well, the lovely interior, though, which will be ruined by the sweaty rapists. Anyway. <laughs> the smell of tuna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come anyway, on. Sorry, moving on Give from me that. something that's not electric, for the love of God. It's not. It's actually something that we might quite enjoy. Do you know how we've had lockdown the past 16 weeks, whatever it's been? Years. And everyone said at the start, oh, we'll come out of lockdown, be more compassionate towards each other. What yeah. they actually didn't say is that we're driving like maniacs during lockdown. I've got a thing here by the RAC. Yeah. It's headlined, truly shocking lockdown speeding offences revealed. R oh, well, how truly shocking? What sort of speeds are we talking about? Well, the best one so far, I said best, I shouldn't say best. <laughs> <laughs> the Get that man a medal. <laughs> Um, is in a 40 mile an hour limit, guess how fast someone was going? I don't know. Well, you can get in pinched at 42. In, in North, North London. London? Yeah. Okay. What was you doing? 134 <laughs> miles an hour. Um, what yeah, was he so doing yeah. in? Does it say? I don't know what he was doing, but well done to that person. Well done, that you can man. come on the podcast whenever you like. Absolutely. We have your, we have your trophy ready for you. Well in the form of a pair of handcuffs. What are you planning on doing with them? Anyway, moving on from that. Um, <laughs> right, okay. 20 police forces have mm -hmm. caught offenders going over 100 miles an hour on the motorway. 100, 20 police forces, 100 miles an hour? Yeah. Have they ever heard of the motorway? I don't think so. I think 100 is probably a bit sedate, really, isn't no, it? No, exactly. That's... What's your favourite road for speeding on? We're going 77 miles an hour. We go 77? Yeah. 
It's 70, isn't it? Is the limit? <laughs> or, what have you been operating on? <laughs> now, what's the best road to... Um, I like the M40 myself. Northbound on the M40 from the M25. Yeah, yeah I like that, that road. That's a good bit because there's never many people on it and plus yeah. there aren't any cameras on it really either. M1, hate the M1. Hate the M1. A- it's all average speed cameras all the way up. Yeah, pretty much. And then north of, of sort of Peterborough on the A1. Oh, between kind of Peterborough and Grantham. That, that, and uh, what, and up, right up the whole No, it's A1. not too bad past Bantham. Really? No. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, not too bad. My favourite, though, What's A1M that? at Pontefract. A1M is... Uh, you know when it opens Southbound, up? yeah, yeah, southbound on the... Uh, Near Peterborough. A1M, yeah, south of Peterborough. That's probably pretty good. A3, uh, coming at the bottom of London towards Guildford. Oh, right. Never yeah, anything yeah. on there. Um, less said about the M25, better. Yeah, exactly. Probably not. Not the M25. But I, I'd quite like to see... So I think people need to get out there, and it says 20 police forces have found people going, I want one police force to find someone doing 200. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. Have you seen the video of the man in the Audi RS6? Uh, is that an RS6? It was an was RS6. That what that was? Videoing himself going 201 That's miles stupid, an hour. isn't it? And then posting it on Facebook. That is, was it Facebook? Stupid. Or oh, Absolutely stupid. Know. Yeah, anyway. If lockdown has taught us anything, it's that people like to use the opportunity to drive like nutters. They will take any opportunity. Yeah. As will we, to be fair. Yeah. So we can't to really talk fair, on no, that can't. anyway. Um, what else have I seen? What have I got any You've news? You've been going on about the new F-150, because you are basically American. I like, the, I like the new F-150. That's just come out. And I love... Obviously, there's only so much you can do with the car, so now you have to make things more mm. and more convenient. And they've gone they? overboard with I've that car. I've not seen it. Oh, you want to see the launch video? Because they did the whole thing. So it's like a hybrid. It's like a mild hybrid. Mm type thing so it's got tremendous pulling power and all this sort of stuff how much would it pull uh twelve thousand pounds what's that in our money i'm not entirely sure but a lot know, that's a lot isn't that it? is a lot um so no you can power through the hybrid system you could got like three pin plugs in the tailgate and you can have your that's gonna be grinder that's gonna be dreadful for americans they won't have to use it oh no that'll be fine they... yeah but this is for big burly lumber carrying Americans. Oh really? Yes, yeah, not we're not talking no one on the west coast of America is gonna be buying this. No, Ribs no for breakfast sort of people. You're not gonna get many people in San Francisco buying this car, I'm gonna say. I'll take a punt and say that. But it's got um like cubby holes for clothes and all this sort of stuff. Guns. Power guns obviously, naturally. But one thing I am quite interested in is what is the common theme between the F-150, the new F-150, and this car here. What's that? The Austin Maxi. They are extremely similar. Oh, absolutely. Oh, way. yeah, absolutely. Very, very, very similar cars. Is it the reclining seats? Oh, you fucking <laughs> sake. Oh, I <laughs> thought I was going to get you there. Yeah, because, yeah, I told you earlier, yes, it's got reclining seats, the F-150, so it does the full one. And there's, and there's back tilt up a little bit so you really? don't hurt your neck, done the whole thing. Full on lumbar support. Plus, wow. you can lower the gear stick and then lay a table, a table attachment type thing across. Is that so you can have your office in your car? Well, no, that's what they say it's going to do, but it's just going to be covered in Big Macs really, isn't yeah. it? But it would be quite nice to have a proper table to eat your Big Mac in, because I don't think I've ever eaten a McDonald's in a car and not dropped a chip down the side of a Absolutely. seat. Have you ever eaten a McDonald's in a car slowly? No, no, who, I don't think anyone has ever no one has, eaten, they? eaten a McDonald's slowly. No. But no, I always lose a chip or a bit of lettuce. There's always is, a lettuce. Isn't they it? always overstuff it with lettuce, mm. in my opinion. And you always ended up with it, and there's no point putting your hand down there. Because it will so, just fall off. It. Oh, absolutely. I think you probably, there's probably quite a few rotting chips in the mm. side of Oh, God, that's just a grim thought. I've always wondered but why. I like the new F 150. I think they're quite, I quite obviously wouldn't work here, judging by the lanes and the, and the, no. Fuel and all this sort of stuff. But would I have one if I lived in America? Probably would. Yeah, I probably, probably would. As well. um, what else is there that's come out? We've got the new TIG one. Oh, yeah, you've oh, been yes. talking about this all week. I've not been talking about it all week. Well, you I mentioned just it today. It relatively interesting. Yeah. The TIG one's had a midlife crisis. Has it? Mm, it's gone out, um, got a bit of fake tan on it, Has it? had its hair done. Well, Maybe VW, some, he's had some hair plugs. VW are doing quite well at this then because we've seen the RT on shooting brake. Yeah. Fantastic looking car. That does look quite really, good. Really, really good. I'm not convinced about the new TIG 1R though because that's been out since 2007. The, the TIG 1 name has been around since really? 2007. I didn't know that. This one's getting 316 horsepower. Obviously, it's a facelift version. Mm. Quad exhausts. 
Yep. What, what a VW Tiguan. Yep. Quad exhaust. That's it, for people who think they're really cool. Well, yeah, like you and the t-shirt you're wearing, really, isn't it? I like my t-shirt. I like my t-shirt. Anyway, keep talking <laughs> about it. It's got a two-liter four-cylinder engine. Uh, oh, <laughs> tell me just, a car that's been brought out now that hasn't got a two-liter four-cylinder engine. I know, but it's putting out 316 horsepower. Uh, it's got a bit of air suspension, Absolutely. if you like, like that. But one thing that I have an issue with mm. is Mercedes doing. I see it more and more. Cars are changing their USB sockets. Yeah. They're going to USB C now, so they're going for a smaller oh, one. Right. So you know the traditional square USB, USB. Yeah, yeah, plug. Yeah. They're now going to a smaller one, smaller circular one, which means all your plugs are completely redundant. So it's like Apple. Yeah, no, basically they're just saying right, you've got to buy a whole load of a whole load oh, of new God. plugs for your car. And if there's one that I really hate wiring in a car, when you open up the open up the cubby hole and it's just full of iPod mm. wires oh, I just hate that it's horrible but it's going to cost around 25k that's not too bad compared to, the, compared to the Cupra Attacker ah, well you that's see that's, they didn't say what they are going to cost but that's oh, what right. the new TIG one's going to cost oh, so right, it's going okay. to start from 25 grand. Sorry, but iPhone chargers with the new USB thing they're 15 quid really it's not worth it. Talk about it, to the 15 opinion. grand. No, no, no. They're, no. they're 15 quid for a new iPhone charger, which, in my opinion, I couldn't be asked to go through and change them no. or get an adapter. So don't buy the TIG one because you're going to have to replace your phone cables. Exactly. God, that is good consumer advice, really, isn't it? That's the first bit of consumer advice you've ever given me. Probably. And the listeners. Well, absolutely. But I just... Wow. No, it's not particularly interesting. No, so. Not. Goodbye, Tig One. Not I've never liked the Tig One myself. Neither have I. Um, I'm going back to America now. New Ford Bronco coming out. Oh yeah. I think it looks good. I've not seen it. Does Ooh, it look like the Cougar? Good. No. It looks like the original sort of look Bronco. Like that, I think. Does it? It looks like. Well, you know how the Alpine A110, mm. Alpine A110. Don't say they're exactly the same sort of car. Well, no, but you see the out. You had the original A110 yeah. from from back in the day. And they got the new one, and they make it look relatively mm. the similar, but everything's rounded because it has to look. Oh, I love the RP110. Oh, new yeah, one. yeah, yeah, it looks, looks really very good. Brilliant car. But I think that Ford have done a similar thing with the new Bronco. So they've mm -hmm. kept the traditional shape of what it used to look like back in the 60s and throughout most of the Bronco's life, but they've rounded it off. They've made it a little more pedestrian, impact friendly, yeah, yeah. and all this sort of stuff. But um, it's got the sort of semi retro look. And do you know what kind of engine it's going to have in it? Has it got a twin turbocharged V8 motor? No, but the original, the original had a V8. Yeah. The original Bronco had a V8 motor. Um, it's got a four-cylinder. Two litre engine. No, not two litre. Really? Though. I'll give them that. It's a 2.6. That makes all the difference. I think two, but that 0. 0.6 makes all the difference. But it should have got a V8, but it's not. It's not having a V8. It's getting a twin turbo V6. So that's a bit disappointing. It's got a good name, though. Bronco. 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 It's a good name. It's that's going to be sort of taking on the Jeep Wrangler kind of thing to it. Which brings me to an interesting question. So we'll finish the news and go on to a question I have. Is that the end of the news then? That's the end of the news. Car makers are bringing back old models and old model names. So we've got Bronco that's come back. Ford have also brought back the new Mac name. It's the return of the Mac. <laughs> For God's sake. <laughs> Your dad jokes are fucking chronic. That will keep you going on this podcast. Anyway, yeah, oh, introduce yeah. your new little topic of discussion. My question is, what are the best car names of all time? Oh, I like that question. Which is a good one. Yes, so when I heard that we were doing this, I've compiled a list of all what I think are the best car names and put it into my list of top ten. Mm -hmm. Because we are blokes and we like a top ten list. I like a good list. I like a good list. Anyway, the ones I haven't included on my list are the Challenger. Oh, I'd take oh, issue with that. Yeah, but don't worry. Just keep this oh, in Oh, okay, there's more. Okay. The Falcon. What was the Falcon? Ford. Ford. Oh, Ford Falcon. The, Mul the Mulsanne. Oh, no, I hate the name Mulsanne. It's got a good behind, though, isn't it? Not, yeah. It hasn't got a good behind, a good background, the Mulsanne. Yeah, yeah, I can see where you're coming from, though. Uh, what else have chosen? The Maverick. What was the Maverick? Was it a Lincoln Maverick? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think I know what you're on about. The Fiat Barquetta. Yeah. I, I just It's a good name, but it doesn't go with the car. Yeah. It's a bit of a crap car. Rough uh, song. Lincoln Rough Aviator. Lincoln the Aviator. Aviator. The Aviator. I'm going to name it mm, the Aviator. Right. And the Lamborghini Diablo. 
Diablo. Diablo. Diablo. Diablo. Yeah. Do you know why I haven't put that in my top ten? Why? Because that wine company has ruined it. Oh, Cassiero del Diablo. Yeah. Wine from the well, devils. That's seller. the one exactly. That's a good plug. That's actually there, why yeah. I haven't chosen it in this uh, list. Yes, because it's any, anyone says, "What are you drinking?" Oh, it's a bit of Cassiero del Diablo. Everyone says, "Wine from the devils." Seller. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, anyway. I've come up with a top ten list. Right. Let's and I want next. you to argue with me. You want me to argue with you? Well, That's you probably the first will time I've ever heard you say that. I don't, I don't know why I said I want you to. I, I think you will Get argue. Get on with it. it. Let's hear your list. Number one. Ask I don't know. Whoa, no, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Work backwards. Work backwards. Yeah, ten to one. Ten Ooh, to one. Okay. And let me ten get to more one. angry. What's the odds that you get angry ten to one? Right. Ferrari Portofino. No. Not number 10, not no, in the top 10. Not a fan of the car in particular. Are you not? Nicer than California, but... I think it's stunning in every sense of the word. Mm. It's a great Grand Tourer. It is a good Grand Tourer, but it's the cheapest Ferrari. So, that's not a bad thing. And I know, but would you go and... To be a terrible snob... It's like choosing wine at a, sh- at a restaurant, isn't it? You what, the you go cheapest. down, 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 just there. Too, yeah. too cheap, too cheap. Uh, up a bit there. You yeah, go. yeah. You don't go for the cheapest. Do exactly. You? Well, you see, I just... I like the Portofino because it's designed to be... To drive around Portofino, but yeah. is it the? Ch- is, would you rather not have one of the super fast jobbies, which I would probably have if I wanted a GT car, like the new four hundred eight? Convertible. So, Charles, you love a convertible. You've been driving around in a one two four bar. Oh, I love like that. Car. And is it a convertible? Uh, yes, yes, it, it is, is exactly. So yes, that's but it's your a good argument out the window. Yeah, Porto- I just chose the Portofino because it's such a beautiful place and it suits the car really well, mm. and I think it's a good name. Okay, yeah, I can see it's a nice play, Portofino. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, Ferrari Portofino comes in at number ten. Yep. Number nine, Land Rover Defender. Defender. I just think because it's a classic icon. Yeah. And it kind of does exactly what it says in the. I 10. don't know. You got it. You got to take what the car is out of it and just think of it as a car name. Car name. Like to be fair, I was saying about bringing back car names. Yeah. They're bringing back the Blazer, the name Blazer for what? Chevrolet. Put which it was, a, was a Chevy version of the Bronco, essentially. Right. And what with that name, great name, Blazer. I take issue with the name Blazer because it's a sort of thing you put on with a pair of jeans when you're trying to impress people at a barbecue. And the new Blazer that they've come out with yeah. was a fantastic opportunity for a name, mm. for a brilliant car. Yeah. But it's just another one of these... Soft rotors, yeah. and it looks soft rotors. It's a soft. No, no, come on, you must know the term soft rotor. <laughs> it's a soft rotor. That. that is brilliant. And it's just a bit of a bit of a shame, really. Yeah. So I get. Well, I wouldn't go with Defender myself, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure how we got on to Chevy Blazers, but I would swap in Defender for what? Delta. Delta Integrale. Come no. on, that's good. No, because I wouldn't want to say that I'm doing an army call sign. What, please? Uh, Alpha, Bravo, Delta, Delta, Integrale. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I like Integrale. What's your next one? Come on. Number eight, Interceptor. Can't deny you with you there. Why isn't that number one? We'll come on to the why that's number oh, one, okay, won't we? Okay, fair enough. It's two steps ahead. Well, actually, eight steps ahead. Number seven, Charger. Charger. Uh, yeah, the only problem is it's like an Apple Charger, but oh, it what? is a great name, isn't it? Uh, no, Charger's a, a great name. Charger is a very good name. That's why it's number seven. Number six, we've got an all-time classic. The Corvette Stingray. Stingray. Sting. Great name, isn't it? Good name. Great name. Stingray. Would it go in my say, top but... ten? Would it not go in your top ten? Because mm. this is meant to be the drive-by top ten. I would go with Superbird. Plymouth Superbird. Oh, I didn't think about. You didn't the Superbird. think about the Superbird, did you? I might. Re- I might replace that with the Portofino. Oh, what? Take out Portofino and yeah. put a Superbird in there. Maybe. Mm. I like it when they have the the Road Runner on the side of the yeah, big yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. look good as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh you really. You see, it up the list there. Chuck the uh, spanner in the works. Number five. So yeah, number six, that was a stingray. Number five, Viper. Viper's a good name. What other good snake names are there for cars? The Cobra? Cobra's taken, dipshit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a Google. Hang on a sec. God, you are so antisocial when you go on your phone, you know. Black rat snake. That's not going to work well on a car. Ma- Grass snake. Mamba. Mamba won't work very well, is it? That's this a is, song, isn't this it? This is Mamba number five. <laughs> it's a car name. The California king snake. Hey, you could make a, well, a Ferrari California king snake. Burmese python. Couldn't have the Chevrolet boa, really. No, you couldn't. Rosie Boa. Oh, anyway, I think that getting, sounds quite sweet. I think we're getting too caught up with snake names. No, I'm having fun. I hate snakes. I hate snakes. Oh, hang on a minute. You could go with the uh, Ford Pit Viper. <laughs> Ford Pit Viper. Coral <laughs> roof snake. Titanoboa. 
Titan of Boa, that's a good name. Not that they're going to call it a Ferrari corn snake, are they? Uh, no, I found my one. This is for a pickup truck. Oh, yeah. You need a, the timber rattlesnake. Oh, so yeah. So you've got snake in it, plus you've got wood timber. in it as well. You've got your timber, you've got so your rattlesnake. The, the Ford F-150 timber rattlesnake. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's stupid. Anyway, yeah, getting anyway, back, away. To, back to your list. Back yeah, to your number list. four, so number five was Viper. Number mm -hmm. four, Lancia Stratos. I don't think you can argue with uh, that. I was going to say, I can't really argue with you. Stratus is a cool name, isn't it? Okay, move on. Number three, Plymouth Barracuda. Barracuda. It's better than the Plymouth Cod, isn't it? There are certain <laughs> fish names that wouldn't really work. The salmon. <laughs> Ford Nemo. Was there ever a car? That sounds almost Ford like that Nemo. was made. The Ford Nemo. That does actually, doesn't it? Ford Nemo. I don't think it ever was, but it doesn't. Anyway, the next one is a Ford. The Lancia Dory. Lancia <laughs> Dory. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the next one is a Ford. The Ford Mustang. Oh, you, why isn't that number one? Well, this is quite controversial now. I think number one is not a Ford. What is it then? I think it's the Aston Martin Vulcan. Okay, I can. I oh really no, cool I'd name. have gone. I'd have gone Vulcan with two Mustang and a top because Mustang is a game changer. Yeah, but you name. told me it wasn't to be about the actual car, just the name. And Vulcan sounds cooler than Mustang. Vulcan or Mustang? Mustang just sounds like the song Mustang Sally. Yeah, but the uh, Barracuda was. Oh, but, who sang that? Barracudas. No, it was the Barracudas. It was the Barracudas. It was the Barracudas. Was the Barracudas. Summer, summer fun. Summer fun, that yeah. was it. Baba Rara Kukudada. <laughs> That's why it's not number one. That's a great song. I need to listen to that song again. That's you brilliant. Do. I haven't heard that in years. Yeah. Anyway, that rounds off what are the I best I want Barracuda at the top now. The Baba Rara Kukudada. Kuku That's number one, is it? It is. Right then, in that case, let's run through the new list like the pop charts. Right. At 10, Portofino has been replaced by Superbird and Defender has been replaced by Cobra at 9. Stingray has dropped from 6th down to 8th, with Charger remaining at 7th. Interceptor has replaced Stingray at 6th, with Viper remaining at 5th. Staying put at 4th is the Lancia Stratos, and Mustang now sits at 3rd place, having been overtaken by Baba Rara Kuku Dada at 2nd. And finally, not quite supersonic and remaining at number 1 is Vulcan by Aston Martin. So there we have it, the drive-by top 10 list of best car names in Charles's favourite voice, Top of the Pops. I love a Top of the Pops voice. You're in actually... fact, I'm going to bring back Top of the Pops and I'm going to present it. You actually weren't too bad, is it there? Who else has done Top of the Pops? Jimmy Savile. Oh, hang on a minute, never mind. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll leave Jimmy Savile alone. No. Um, right, so excellent. We can move on. Move on. To another instalment of Drive by Destroy. Cue, Cue the sting. Cue the sting. That will never get old, will it? No, it really won't. Anyway, what have you got for me this week? Right, to start, we have the Seat. No, it's not the Seat, Seat is it? It's, it's the Cupra Ateca Ooh, yeah. that we mentioned last week. We both loved it. Mm. Uh, and then we have the Volkswagen Tiguan R that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and the Audi RS Q3. So you've gone for like a crossover kind of vibe. I've gone this week. for a crossover vibe, but there's one issue. They're all the same car, They're aren't they? They're all the same car. They're all built on the same platform. What is the all platform? Over. What, you want me to tell you the acronym for it? I yeah. have no idea. Oh, sorry. But basically, it covers every single car in the range. Every single car is the same base. <laughs> all of this same... So miles. actually, we're either driving, buying, or destroying the same car. Pretty much. Of different names. I thought that'd be quite an interesting thing to do. Bit of a paradigm, a bit of a paradox. I'll go first. We'll go on then. Oh, where do you start do? with these three cars differentiating them apart from horsepower? Well, the horsepower sort of goes up as you would expect. Yeah. Seat is the lowest, Tiguan in the middle, and the Audi at the top with what's it, 395 bhp? It's kicking out quite a lot there, isn't it? Really, it does, yeah. But as a car, no, dog ugly, yeah, really I think not that's dog ugly. Car. I think the Tiguan is the least, it's a question of which is the least offensive. Probably the lesser, the lesser of because the evils. The, the Cooper's trying to be something it's not. Anyway, we're getting off topic. You do your little drive-by destroy on this. I will be driving... Oh, well, well will I? This is a really tough one this week. Very it? tough Because they are all the same. They're all the same. I don't, it's a question of which one do I want to destroy more. Or I'd the least. quite like to drive <laughs> the Audi into the sea. But then again, I think the Cupra is a bit... And do you know what? No, tell you what. The Cupra is so expensive... For what it is. For what it is. Yeah. I say that. Um, I will be destroying, I'm working backwards now, I'll be destroying the glorified Seat. Go on then. I will be driving the RSQ3 
absolutely going at it. Hopefully trying to put it in the wall yeah, yeah. on a track. Um, and I'll be buying the Tiguan L because a you're buying the Tiguan L. You've literally just slated it. I have in your own. Con- you've just gone against your own consumer advice. There. I have done. I have done. But out of those three, that's the lesser of the evil for me. It's got four other naughty exhausts, which look quite good from the back. I think it comes in quite a nice colour. What colour? It comes in any colour, doesn't the it? The blue. The blue R. You hate I that think. blue R line colour. You even said last week that you hate that colour. I know, but I changed my mind on a semi-weekly basis. You're about as useless as. A chocolate teapot. That's jolly kind of you. Now I'm sticking with my option of driving the RS Q3 thingy, mm-hmm. buying the Tiguan R, yeah. and destroying the attacker. I can sort of see where you're coming from there. I'm a little bit different though. I that's sort of I'm not really bothered about my choices there. On you. If I'm honest, because essentially it's all the same car and I don't really care yeah. for anything. I'll gloss over mine then so we can go on to pulling power after this. Okay, go ahead. So I would be Similarly, but not similarly, mm. I'll be destroying the attacker. Yep. One, because I hate a car that's trying to be something that's not, Fair more enough. than anything. And also, it's just a beefed up Seat, and it's overpriced. Yep. I would be driving the Tiguan R. Okay. Because I wouldn't want to own one. Because yep. the, the sort of people that own a Tiguan R are the people that think they're really cool, but still like to talk about the mileage per gallon out of their car. Ah, oh, yes. It gets surprisingly good miles to the gallon. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I would buy in the RSQ3 just because I'd like to thrash it around every single day. A nice suit looking like a massive bell end. So no, fair enough. I that would be my car there. right there. You'll get no argument from me on that last point. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we going to do? A pulling power? We'll do your pulling power today. Today? I have actually organised one just for you because I know last time we did this, you wanted to do the Ferrari Dino, and I said we'll do this bass. So, yep. this week. Chosen five cars again. Two very similar cars, dear. Two very similar cars, absolutely. But yeah, this time I've chosen five cars. Mm -hmm. So we're doing the Ferrari Dino, the Fiat 124 Abarth, which we've been driving recently. Yep. The Alfa Romeo Mito. Yep. The Lamborghini Aventador. Okay. And the Lancia Upsilon. (laughs) (laughs) Or what was that otherwise known as? The Chrysler... Crap. (laughs) <laughs> I can't remember, but yeah, let's yeah, go with the Chrysler. Terrible crown. name, that, isn't it? Lancia Upsilon. Anyway, Upsilon. Yeah. I thought I'd do it all in Italian cars. Okay. So the scale goes, one, rejected. Two, let's just be friends. Mm-hmm. Three, buy me a drink. And four, weak at the knees. Oh, yeah. Never do that to me again. You sound like the fat, white Barry White. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're starting off this week with the Ferrari Dino. Right, okay. What we're doing? I think... Weak at the knees. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Because it's not flashy. But this person has taste. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. They definitely have taste. Definitely weak at the knees. For That's a, a nice, easy one to start off with. Thought we'd ease it in. Straight in. Ease it straight into it. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I've just said that. Anyway. Carry on. <laughs> Fiat 124 bar. Uh, I was really not impressed with this car, you know. Were you not? No. Uh, you had the automatic version. It was an auto. That's a big... Any Black other, cross in my book. Any other straight up the road mm. that we kind of went along. I put my foot flat down. Don't worry, it's not 30. Put a foot flat down and it took the car ages to actually realise I was trying to do something interesting with it. Do you know why that was? Why? Because it was an automatic. Yeah, I know, it was rubbish. Yeah, I know, but because you hadn't like, engaged flappy paddle mode or anything yeah. like that, or put it into manual, Yeah. if it was a manual in your right gear, you'd have gone straight off. But yeah, because yeah. you put your foot hard down, it was still in auto, it was going... Uh, second, no, third, no, oh, right, okay, I'll go. So it's going full Italian, basically. No, it's just going full automatic. That's yeah. what happens in an automatic. But anyway, what would you do if someone pulled out outside your house to pick you up for a date? How would you feel? Weak at the knees. Oh, I'll tell you why. No, I don't think you're right there. I'll tell you why. Small Italian sports car. Yeah. Good, good three words right there. Yeah. Encouraging. Going to be a future classic in my book. No, it's, it's going to be a rust box. No, it isn't. It's built by the Japanese. It's not, going to, be be, it's not going to be a but, future classic because it'll be worth about 10 grand in two years' time. Yeah, I know that. But then you can pick one up for a good bargain and then whoosh, sky's the limit. Mm, right, whatever. I don't think... I, I don't think, think I, I think buy me a drink. Okay, you'll go... Okay, so we disagree on that one. We do, yeah. Oh, I think you're wrong. <laughs> but we'll, we'll move on. As per usual. Alfa Romeo Mito. Um, I think rejected straight away. Do you think? Yeah. I think they're dreadful. If they know cars. anything it's about so, cars... It's so tragic, that car. If the person that one is trying to woo knew anything yeah. about cars, they'd go, Mito's a bit crap. But if they don't, it's still a small car and it would stand the same chance as... A Fiesta. Exactly. Yeah, I see, I see what you mean there. I think it'd be a Let's Just Be Friends or Buy Me A Drink on that basis. Uh, buy Me A Drink. I think it's just Let's Just Be Friends. Oh, you see, that's two. What are we on? Two out of... 
four, five, 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 two out of five. We don't agree on. I know. Uh, next one is the uh, Lamborghini Aventador. I think rejected. rejected. This is like the F12, isn't it? Like it is. It's the same thing. Big, big gaudy watch. Big loud it, supercars and yeah. stuff like that means you're making up for something. So immediately rejected then. And finally, the Lancia Upsilon. Oh, it's just such an uninspiring name. It looks it? really sad as well. It car. is a sad looking car. It looks so American. Because that was also built in tandem with the Chrysler Upsilon. So it has the same name as the Chrysler. That is how uninspiring that oh, car is. They couldn't God. be asked to think of another name no. for the car. Well, they are Americans. So what that to expect? Is fucking dreadful. Ridiculous. Anyway, what were you going to do then? Rejected. Rejected. It's away. just too ugly. With the most uninspiring date this person's ever gone on. I say it could be in the same vein as the Mito, just oh, it's another little small car, but it's too ugly. At least the Mito looks a yeah. bit cute. It looks a bit gormless, but it looks a bit cute. The no, Upsilon, I, pff, yeah. I wouldn't open the door yeah. myself. Let's do a recap then. Ferrari Dino, weak at the weak knees. Weak at the knees. Uh, Fiat 124, a bath. Weak at the knees. I think let's just be friends. Uh, okay, fair enough. And yeah. the Alfa Romeo Mito? Uh, buy me a drink. Yeah, yeah. I thought the Alfa agreed a little bit there because it is an Alfa mm. at the end of the day, and that does a lot of the work for. And it is a bit cute. Exactly. Lamborghini Aventador. Goodbye. Straight away rejected, making up for a massive lost cause. And the Lancia Upsilon. Weak at the knees. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ending our really. eye. Rejected. Straight it's away just rejected. Too damn ugly. Yeah, we are. We're finishing on two rejections. Yes, we are. That's, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's an upbeat way to end, isn't it? Well, thank you for doing that, Pulling Power. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, it was all right. I've enjoyed this podcast. Good breadth of cars going on there. A good like breadth that. of Italian cars. Exactly. So that brings us to the end of episode four now, doesn't oh. it? So we will see you all again very soon for episode five. So join us again for another episode of the Drive by Pod. Oh, before we go, yeah. F1 predictions for this weekend. Oh, Austria. yeah. We have been watching the qualifying, haven't we? And Bottas is on pole. Bottas is on pole. I fancy Bottas. Yeah. Well, no, uh, I don't fancy <laughs> Bottas. No. You're undenying love for a Formula One driver. I like a bit of Finn. I like a bit of Finn. I like Kimi Raikkonen as well. I, I think I quite fancy Kimi Raikkonen. Really? Too, anyway. There's only a whole new lot about you, Charles, in Absolutely. this podcast. Um, no, I, I think... Valtteri Bottas, because he's on pole. He may have a fair shout... Will they pull team orders, make yeah, him slip back? Maybe. Then I think Max Verstappen will be in second. He'll have Bottas. I, I really I don't fancy Max Verstappen, <laughs> but I think he will come first in this race. Do you think he he'll beat him? Last two races, who's won? Max mm, Verstappen. True. Well, and the Red Bull race. And anyway. he is third. So I do think he stands a chance. I really think he stands a chance. I think you're probably right, actually. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's second at the lowest. Yeah. the lowest point. I'd agree. I would agree. And the racing points have really surprised me in qualifying as really? well. Really? Well, they, were, they finished off quite lower down, I think like 6th and ninth. Mm. but that's better than they did last season. So, so yeah, anyway, we'll see this by, the, by the next episode, <laughs> you'll know whether we were right or not. And Charles will still have his underlying love for Finnish people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A bit of Valtteri. <laughs> Lovely. <Shut up. laughs> right, okay. I'm ending it there. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Join us next week for episode 5. 5. Episode, episode five. 5. It's flying by. Tune in. Tune in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.